Hey everybody, welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays, your source of animal rights news and gossip all packed into a short, sweet 3 minutes today. is definitely not going to be 3 minutes and unfortunately it's not going to be sweet. There's a lot going on in the grassroots vegan movement. There's some good news, there's some bad news, but um, today I think we need to focus on one topic in particular that I think has really been buzzing through the movement and I think it's really important we have a talk about it. So yeah, I'll see you on the other end. Okay, everybody, I'm not going to put up three minutes because I already know I'm not going to stick to three minutes, let's be honest with ourselves. Before we get going, um, quick reminder, Monday I'll be putting out episode three of season three of All Be Winning. I think it's going to be a good one, and I think it's actually pretty tied into what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, today, we are talking about Alex Bez. And so a lot of people are like, who the hell is that guy? And uh, I wouldn't blame you. I didn't know who he was either until a couple days ago. Some of you or a lot of you might not be aware of the situation that's been going on in the vegan movement uh, around this person. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the details of it, but predominantly I want to talk about the bigger, broader implications and, and issues and my general thoughts about it, which I think would apply to both people that do or do not know uh, about this situation. So basically like the last few days has been like this, uh, yet another massive upheaval in the vegan movement in a long and unfortunate series of men taking advantage of women, uh, engaging in problematic and predatory behavior, sexual misconduct, and abuse. So at the center of all of this, this time is a guy by the name of Alex Bez. You may know him as Amazing Vegan Outreach. Um, he used to work in the corporate sector, but now he works um, in the vegan movement, teaching vegans quote, advanced coaching and communication skills, unquote, in order to make people better at vegan outreach. Unfortunately, he is unable to apply some of those communication skills to the basic concepts of consent. So by both accounts, both him and her, they both agreed to the timeline that they were sharing a bed together with another activist. So apparently there's three people lying in bed together after a protest. He was massaging her and touching her and was continuing to try to, you know, take it further and further um, and trying to make it more and more intimate. His master communication skills apparently made him um, unable to read her signals uh, of pushing his hand away from her body. So he took her hand and tried to get her to touch him. And after a firm no, he eventually gave up. This week, the woman came out with a statement outlining what had happened between the two of them, both consensually and non-consensually. Alex eventually replied back with a 30 minute video where near the end of it, he kind of buried this 60 second piece that Indeed, he did do those things that were outlined in the statement. And then later through his supporters, reconfirmed that yes, he had done those things, but no, that doesn't make him a sexual abuser. So this story obviously continues to play out in really awful ways, including Alex asking uh, people to donate to him through a GoFundMe so that he can then sue the woman. Groups like Save and Direct Action Everywhere banning him from all their uh, protests and activities and organizations. And shocker, more women coming forward um, with stories from the past couple of years of Alex making them feel uncomfortable. So of course there's a lot of back and forth and he said, she said, but I, I personally believe the woman um, and I support her speaking up. So I think people can engage in as much or as little uh, consensual activity with as many or as few people as they want. As long as that communication is clear between all those that are involved, go for it, have fun. But no matter what, at any point during that time, during that fun, if it's the first time or the 100th time, even if, if you're halfway through said fun, if someone says, nah, I'm good, or just gives very direct nonverbal signs, like, I don't know, taking your hand and removing it from their body, that doesn't mean then taking their hand and trying to put it on your dick. That actually means that fun time is over. But because Alex and people like him are fairly confident that everyone that they find attractive wants to stick their hands down his pants. Uh, women are dragged through the mud, they're called liars, they're called whores, or slut shamed. And the next time this happens, people just can't believe that the woman didn't come out sooner, or come forward faster, or why they would possibly want to do it anonymously. That this possibly can't be true, because otherwise you'd be found guilty in the court of law. And at the end of the day, we really just need to hear both sides of the story. These are the same vegans who if you came up to them and said, you know, hey, this guy down the street kicked his dog last week. They would not hesitate to go down there and yell at the guy or take his dog to safety or find out where he worked or who he was on social media to go after him there. Hell, people would probably even physically intervene. They would stand up for that dog no matter what, take them to safety, even if they hadn't seen the actual aggression. Their response to that situation with the dog 
isn't, well, he wasn't found guilty by a court of law for kicking that dog. Or let's go down there and talk to him and really get both sides of the story about this dog. Maybe the dog liked to be kicked. The dog flinched and gave nonverbal cues that they didn't like the kicking. But I mean, can we really be sure? And yeah, he's kicked that dog for years and no one's come forward complaining in the past, so I don't see what the problem is. That's discrimination where you are treating members of one species as morally more important than members of the other species, even when their interests are equivalent. That's also the definition of speciesism. Now, as I said, I could go on and on about this particular instance, but I want to speak about something bigger. A lot of the responses to this particular instance and all the instances like them really kind of boil down to um, people unable to believe that a vegan or an animal rights activist would do something like this, or that they do so much for the animals. When I got involved in the mid 90s, I remember almost immediately being told about this guy who had assaulted a couple other women in the movement. And this scenario of predation and abuse has continued over and over and over pretty much nonstop since I got involved in like 1996. And obviously this is happening all around the world in all different communities, all different societies, but the vegan world is not absolved from it. It has happened for the last 25 years I've been involved and I'm sure has been happening for years and years and decades and decades in the animal rights movement before I was involved. But the patterns are always the same. And the response, just like Alex and his friends and supporters, is always the same, which ultimately means that we have to do better, which includes thinking about playing the long game. And I know you're all sick of hearing me talking about strategizing, but we have to strategize on how to make this better. And in my opinion, I think that means three things. And I think that a lot of this work needs to be shouldered by the men in the movement. We, particularly men, have to listen and we have to learn, and then we have to take what we've heard and what we've learned and talk about it with other men. I know that's hard for men to admit that we don't necessarily know everything and that we're not good at everything, but it's something I think we're gonna have to overcome. We need to have conversations. We need to challenge one another. We need to hold each other accountable, even if that means holding some of our best friends accountable. We also need to allow each other to make mistakes in those conversations and in those spaces because mistakes are natural and they're gonna happen. And we need to encourage other people to apologize. So that means in Alex's case, that 30 minute bullet dodging master of communications video could have been two minutes long and it could have simply been an apology. Which reminds me of this quote I just heard, which I really love. It's always more difficult to recover than it is to do the right thing in the beginning. Second piece, we as a movement need to stop creating people like Alex. We need to stop creating a culture that props up men like him on pedestals. We need to stop filling their Patreon coffers with hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year. We need to stop elevating them to this level of untouchable hero not only because it's not a strategic move for our movement, but because we are creating a dynamic between them and us, between them and the rest of the movement. We are separating them out as, as more important and smarter and more strategic and as extraordinary, and they are not. They are not extraordinary. They are not smarter than us or more strategic than the rest of us. But that division creates a situation where when young, impressionable, new people enter into this movement, for the first time, they already see them up on these pedestals, right? They already want to be around them. They want to spend time with them. They look up to them. And subsequently, they have then become set up to become victims of predatory behavior. And this, of course, is not saying that all men are inherently bad or there are no men doing good work or that are good activists. Of course there are. There are loads of men doing loads of really important and fantastic work in this movement and other movements around the world. But there are also loads of women and non-binary folks who are also doing amazing work and lots and lots of it. And statistically, they are the majority of this movement. Yet how come we don't see them portrayed as heroes or leaders of this movement? How come they aren't pulling in $130,000 a year through Patreon donations? How come you don't see them being paid a salary to travel around the world to talk to vegans about veganism? Is it because they aren't as good as these men? Is it because they aren't as skilled or strategic or as capable? Or is it because our unconscious bias has dictated it? We need to break that in our movement the same way we need to break racism and homophobia and transphobia and sexism and speciesism. And that falls on us. That falls on all of us. 
when we share things on social media, when we organize protests, when we put together lectures or uh, talks or conferences or veg fests. When we're doing those things, we need to stop and ask ourselves, who are we giving money to in donations or speaker fees? And who are these speakers and activists in our panels and on our social media? And do they represent the broad range of people that participate in this movement? And if the answer is no, we need to rethink about who and why we are amplifying the people that we do. And the third and final thing, which is by no means a silver bullet solution, I think we need to root our movement in the idea of collective liberation. It's an unfortunate reality that this behavior and worse goes on in communities all around the world, activist or not. But as a small but growing movement based in the idea of liberation, we should be striving to be the best that we can be to continue that fight for non-human animals, but also understand and support the struggles for Earth and human liberation. For us as a movement to understand that the struggles and the oppression under uh, patriarchy and rape culture isn't something that we just apply to dairy farms, um, but people all around the world allows us the animal rights movement to hopefully be more compassionate in times like these, more understanding uh, and more successful ultimately in rooting it out. It allows us to do away with these so-called leaders and heroes in our movement that wish sexual assault on women that wear fur or suggest that men are the most vilified people in our movement. It does away with the organizations that platform these people and provide them with salaries. And it stops this ridiculous defense that we have to hear every single time this happens, but he does such good work for the animals. We are a social justice movement, and we need to start acting like it. All right, finally, it's, it's okay to take a break, right? That can be a few minutes. It can be a few hours. It can be a few days. It can be a few weeks. You, you know, you take what you need. This isn't a fight for one person to shoulder or a small community or small group of people to shoulder. It's something that we all need to take responsibility for and deal with. So do what you need to do to take care of yourself. But in the meantime, we should all keep fighting.